generation or so, you remember saying, search me? Remember those words? Search me? I don't know if it's really used anymore, and that might just show you how far out of coolness I really am. <laughs> but I remember it from when I was younger, both hearing it and saying it. But maybe it's been replaced by the ubiquitous whatever. <laughs> Although that might be outdated by now, too. Search me. It's a way of saying I don't know without actually using the words I don't know. It was an admission of ignorance, it may be even complacency. It refers to what we don't know, which can really be quite a long list if you think about it. There is much we don't know about the world, about ourselves, or the stars, the galaxies, the universe. There's a lot we don't know about God. What do you know about God? What do you think about God? What do you believe about God? Search me. And one of the problems the church has these days, some think, is that we no longer are sure of what we believe. And one of the ways we're ensuring we don't fall into that category, and I don't believe we do fall into that category, but one of the ways we're ensuring we don't it has been the development and the, the rollout of our church mission statement and vision statements. And it's taken a while of developing them and gathering your input and your thoughts and your suggestions and putting it all together. It's taken a lot of prayer and, and research and time. Well, I, I just want to let you know that we'll be rolling those out to the October no newsletter. And then again at our upcoming joint services. And to keep this uh, identity at the, at the heart of, of visibility, if you will, we'll go on uh, the, the website, the new website that's being designed. Um, I hope to find or be the identity of who we are as a church, help answer the questions of why St. James? Why St. Mark's? Who is St. James? Who is St. Mark's? These are small things, perhaps, but so very important because they are outward and visible signs of us continuing to move forward as the body of Christ. We continue to grow in our faith and deepen and enrich our lives as followers of Christ. And in my time here with you, uh, I've seen so many of you striving to move beyond what you once were and what you once knew. You've wanted to know more about God and how God fit into your, your life each and every day, not just Sundays. You wanted to know more about the Bible and Jesus. So you've come to study groups, the Bible studies. You wanted to reach out to know more about what you know about than just this area. And you've, you've gone on mission trips to Knoxville and Cleveland and Elliott County in Kentucky. And you've served in the church and you've served throughout the community. You've served in many ways that, that many of the church members, and certainly I, don't even know about it because you're not serving for notoriety. You're not s serving for honor and glory. You're serving because you've been called to serve. And that's what you do. You've come out with me in my office as we talk about Christ and life and stuff. There's at least one couple in our in our churches, the two churches, who pledged to tithe their income or give one-tenth of their income each year. I think they're in their second or third year of doing so. You give faithfully. It's part of our stewardship. 
you've hung with me during sermons where we really dig in. And, and sometimes it might seem a bit long. <laughs> I see some smiles there. Yeah, I hear, I hear that. <laughs> but the way I look at it is this. This is just too important to cheapen the moment. It, it's, it's okay for us to give another five or seven minutes if we need to, to the Word of God. But that means I have to work really hard to give you something meaningful. I can't just fill your ears with fluff. And if you can listen attentively for about 17 minutes, I promise I will do my best to give you a meaningful message each Sunday so that we can continue to grow together. And perhaps the use of Search me will become even less prevalent. Of course, search me is also used in a different way. We see this in Psalm 139 where the writer writes, O Lord, you have searched me. O Lord, you have searched me. And the writer immediately equivocates this to, and you have known me. O oh Lord, you have searched me and known me. And then for the next 11 verses or so, the writer describes how God knows him. When I sit down, when I get up, you know my thoughts. Before I even speak, you know what I'm going to say. You are around me, you're behind me, you're before me. There's nowhere I can go that you are not. If I ascend to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I go to the farthest parts of the sea, you're there. In the darkest of dark, it doesn't matter. Because you see as if the darkest of dark were as the brightest of daylight. You are there. It's a reassuring, comforting, uplifting thought that no matter what, God is always there with us. Well, the, the writer goes on to say, you made me, Lord. You made me. You made me, and I thank you that I am wonderfully made. Thank God. We're not all made <laughs> like this. We're all different. Uniquely made. Hmm. Have you ever said to God, thank you? Thanks, God. You made me. <coughs> and you did a really good job. You do good work, God. And we're not bragging on ourselves. We're just recognizing that God made us. And we're giving thanks to God for doing so. But we struggle sometimes with who we are. We, we aren't always satisfied with ourselves. We, wanna, we want to change how we look, how tall we are, or how short we are, how round we are, how bald we are, how big our nose is. Watch our ears stick out. Uh, we worry that we aren't skinny enough, or buff enough, or cool enough, or we don't fit into this crowd or that crowd, when what we really need to do is to be the person that God created us to be and stop trying to be who we think we should be. We don't need to compare ourselves to Taylor Swift, Chris Hemsworth. Yeah, I'm reminded of a funny story that I was listening to on the radio the other day. It's an early morning talk show with three hosts. Now, let me just preface this by saying it's a, it's a sports talk show. This is not a, a religious talk show. 
I'm not entirely sure how they got onto this particular subject. It's an early morning talk show with three hosts, and one of them began to complain about the use of the letter K in the word knife. <laughs> what a useless use of the letter of the alphabet, he said. It's been such a waste of ink over the ages. The other one said, yeah, think of how much ink could have been saved if the K in knife didn't have to be printed. <laughs> the other one said, you don't even hear it. He went on to say that when God wrote the English language, he should have put K in the word knife. The other two hosts are laughing so hard by now. One of the other two is a staunch Catholic, and he managed to say that he didn't know which was more theologically broken. The fact that God created the English language, or that God got it wrong. The absurdity of this is what made it so funny. God didn't create or write the English language. But it was a second part of this fictional creation story, the belief that God got it wrong that caught my attention. Because God doesn't get it wrong. God didn't make a mistake on any one of us. He didn't get us wrong. And God knows us so very well. That even before we were formed, God knows us. God made us just the way we're supposed to be. The psalmist knows this and is so very thankful. And he concludes the psalm with these words. How precious to me your th are your thoughts, O God. How precious to me are your thoughts, O God. Just knowing that you think of me, God, means the world to you. Thank you, God. Elijah, I think is the name. Thank you. I may have heard this, but North High in Sheboygan has had a rough week since last week. There's been a number of uh, bomb threats called in. Um, I, I don't know the whole backstory, but uh, evidently was called in to the North High School or High School, but it didn't identify which North High School. So all the North High Schools in this particular district um, had to go on a, well, a lockdown, affected day uh, of classes, of course, and the parents and the teachers and the staff and administration and, and all of that. So we keep our high schools um, in our prayers. We keep our schools in our prayers. We continue to lift up the Schuler family. Friends, let's uh, take a moment now.
to lift our own prayers up to God in a moment of silent prayer. Heavenly God, each day we lift our thoughts to you. We may not always say thank you, but we mean thank you. Help us to remember and praise you, and worship you, and all that we do, all that we are, all that we will be. Today we come to you and we Pray for the family, the friends, the community, the lives. We pray for the schools. We recently received bomb threats. We pray for all of our schools, Lord. With our schools and our communities that we can go about the business of education and not have to go about the business of lockdowns and security and protection and police. Be with our Sunday school teachers. Our Sunday school class. The beautiful children our church of all ages. Bless them, O oh Lord, and bring such joy into our lives. And hear, O oh Lord, the unspoken word of prayer and praise that has been lifted to you as we now come together praying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
invite, invite you to join with me in our prayer of dedication and thanksgiving. Gracious God, we bring these offerings with hearts full of love and gratitude, inspired by the beauty of your creation and the love that binds us. Just as the Song of Solomon celebrates love's arrival, we dedicate these gifts to further your kingdom with joy and patience. May they bring hope, peace, and transformation, reflecting your love for all. Help us to be stewards of your grace and love in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, I invite you to stand as you are able. Take up your hymnal. Open it to 466. And we will sing, He Leadeth Me. Thank you. 